Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Vast and Ominous Comic Book Vault. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Dan. Today, Dan and I are going to talk about the uh, first seven issues of The Incredible Hulk, uh, the first two arcs, and uh, primarily we'll be talking about the uh, the, this, uh, the second arc, of course, uh, the uh, Hulk versus Banner stuff, And uh, but it's difficult to talk about that without talking about the early stuff, so we're going to kind of uh, knock it all out. But yeah, this is uh, Jason Aaron's uh, run on the Hulk. Uh, obviously, he's, he's, uh, he's still continuing after this, but um, this is... Uh, this is the uh, the big big deal for right after Fear itself. Uh, uh, at the end of that, it was revealed that uh, the Hulk and Bruce Banner were uh, were split up again um, with a very interesting uh, kind of mad scientist twist. And uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to talk about that right now. Dan, why don't you get us get us started? All right. Uh, I first want to thank Jason Aaron for kind of returning to psychodrama sort of Hulk stories because that's what I love about Incredible Hulk stories. Like I'm a pretty big Hulk guy, so a lot of the stuff that Pac was doing before wasn't this, and this is my favorite Hulk stuff, but um, in this, um, I thought his psychological take on the Hulk was really interesting, where um, he, he basically tells us with this story that Hulk and Banner are basically the same person, but um, they sort of have created these... Um, these personalities to sort of blame all of their failures and shoulder their insecurities. Like if you look at like what Bruce Banner is in relation to who the Hulk is, like Banner is everything that the Hulk feels insecure about. Like he's weak minded, not, not that he's unintelligent, but he, he's mentally unstable. He's physically weak, but he's in, extremely intelligent, which is what everyone tells the Hulk that he's not. And the same thing, vice versa, with Bruce Banner. And when they're split up, you kind of see them retreat back into their comfort zones, like what they're good at. Like Bruce Banner goes in, into solitary confinement and does science stuff, and the Hulk goes and does the same thing but goes and smashes stuff. And when they start failing at things without each other, they can't blame each other for their failures, and that's what brings them into a physical conflict. And you kind of see that conflict play out that would usually be in their head physically. And... um it, we see the Hulk kind of left at the same place that Banner was towards the beginning of the story, where he's kind of lost without the without a scapegoat for all of his failures at the at the end, where the Hulk's kind of seeing Banner scream in his head, and that that ending kind of reaffirmed for me that uh, Banner and the Hulk are the same person because how can you truly destroy a part of yourself? You know what I mean? Even though it was cut out of his head, Banner's still in there because they're the same. Well, Dan, that was a great review, man. You don't need me. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. No, I, no, I, I absolutely agree with you, and uh, that's that's what I loved about this. Uh, let, let me let me say first of all that I actually have read almost no Hulk before this. Oh, really? Yeah, Hulk was never my thing. I never really cared about it, and I gave I gave this one a chance because I'd been enjoying Jason Aaron on so many other things lately. Uh, th- this was right after uh, Schism. Uh, which I loved, and oh. so I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna give this a try because you know I, I read Fear itself, and then I read that that uh, that point one issue, whichever one it was, where they they showed uh, you know them split off, and I was like, that's interesting. I want to see where they go with it, and so I, I started I started buying this and uh, fell in love with it, and it didn't matter that it was Hulk. It's a, it's it's such an extremely fantastic story, and it made me appreciate this character a lot more. Um, I, I I feel like from from what I know about the Hulk, I feel like it is it is pretty true to this character. Although I, I feel like Jason Aaron is going really, really far in in a direction that I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised that uh, that he was willing to chance uh, with with this whole notion of uh, Bruce Banner was basically always a mad scientist, and if it hadn't been for the Hulk, he would have just turned into his father. Yeah, exactly. Because it, it's kind of a thing where. Bruce Banner is sort of the... I've always looked at him as sort of the anti-Peter Parker, where he doesn't want to take responsibility for anything in his life. Where, Absolutely, yeah. Where Peter does. And um, without someone to blame everything on, he's the only one he can blame his failures on. And he takes it out. He just takes it out on other people, just like his father did. One of the things you mentioned that I wanted to run with a little bit was the idea not just that the Hulk is is this part of Bruce Banner that he can't get rid of, but that that also works vice versa. 
and I feel like again, not having read much Hulk before this, I, I could be wrong on this, and I, and I do, and I know that this isn't the first time they've been split up, and I appreciated the fact that the book even admitted that. that yeah, there, there's a place where it mentions, yeah, this has happened before, but it was never a complete split. It never, it, it, it was, it was always, it was always a patchwork job. It was never done quite right. Um, it, the the place that I thought was really original was the idea that the Hulk is a fully realized person. Yeah, they kind of... Self, without, without banner. Yeah, they've kind of been playing with that uh, since Planet Hulk. That characterization oh, okay. has sure. been uh, around a little bit, but Aaron kind of... When he split them up, he kind of uh, reaffirmed that uh, because the way Loeb was writing him after Planet Hulk was, you know, Hulk that can barely talk, <laughs> and that kind of screwed with things, so... Um, this this was kind of a, a very much welcome return to the, the Hulk that I like. That's somewhat intelligent, you know. I feel like this characterization of Bruce Banner is so radical that, and don't get me wrong, I like it, mm -hmm. especially and, and and I may only like it in the context of this story. I don't know if it's got legs, and that's one of the things I am kind of worried about with it. Um, what I'm what I'm what I really wonder is if it's possible to keep Bruce Banner characterized like this without it ever getting retconned. <laughs> because anytime I have ever seen a, 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 an air quote superhero, and, and I'm not sure that Bruce Banner on his own is a superhero, but he was always still the protagonist. You know, even even yeah. when the Hulk had his own personality, Bruce Banner was still either the protagonist or a dual protagonist. But here, he's either the villain or they both are. If, if if that makes any sense, and 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 anytime I've ever seen anything like that, it's always somehow been retcon. You know, uh, when when Hal Jordan went evil, that got retcon. I think what Aaron's going to do with this is kind of flip the Banner and Hulk dynamic on its head, where Hulk's going to be the protagonist and Banner is going to be the monster in his head that he doesn't want to let out. Clearly, which I think is a great idea. Yeah, so I think I, I, it's going to have legs in that way, where you're going to have mm -hmm. you're you're not it's not going to be primarily focused on Banner per se. I mean, they are the same person in this characterization, but. Um, I think that's where you're going to get legs out of this, where he's going to be used sparingly. Do you think... Yeah, but I wonder how long that can possibly go before it returns back to status quo. I don't know. I mean, that's the thing with Hulk. He's. It seems like uh, Marvel has a very loose kind of thing with the Hulk, where whatever writer comes on, they can do whatever take with him they want. So I don't know if this is, you know, this this characterization probably won't even stick around after Aaron leaves. I don't think it will either, uh, because it's too turned on its head. You know, it, it, it's the exact opposite of what it used to be. Right. But but I, I'm I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think it's really I think it's really cool for the sake of the story. I just don't know how long it's going to stick around, and I'm and I'm a little afraid that it's too interesting. Uh, you know, you know that that later on whoever takes over is not going to be able to do anything nearly as as interesting as this. I want to talk about the Doctor Doom thing. Okay. Because I thought that Jason Aaron planted a fantastic red herring at the beginning of this. That was one of the things I was really impressed with it, with the woman who runs the secret agency that goes that, that goes and tries to kill mad scientists. Which, by the way, I <laughs> love that there is an agency that kills mad scientists. Uh, we, have, we have, you mentioned, you said it this way before we, we started recording, and, and this is what I was thinking, too, that, that uh, there, there's very much a B-horror movie vibe to this. And th th this, I think, I think was one of the fun things things in it, where it's like, where it's like the Marvel universe has so many mad scientists that we have like uh, an, an agency. <laughs> yeah, we're like the Men in Black for mad scientists, <laughs> and and, uh, and and so and and they're run by this woman whose last name is Von Doom, and she claims to be no of, of no relation to Victor Von Doom. Which, the first time she says it, actually, the first several times she says it, I, I, I buy it completely, and I thought that it was just Aaron doing a really amusing joke, where, in the real world, you probably would have multiple Von Dooms, and they wouldn't all necessarily be related, and I thought that was really fun. And then, and, and, and then uh, you know, she's this great red herring for the big mystery of who split these two up, or how exactly it happened. Uh, in the second issue, there is dialogue in a flashback from Victor Von Doom off screen, yeah, there off, off panel, and and so we're, we're really wondering who exactly did Hulk go to to get him split off, and I never saw it coming, and it was telegraphed from the beginning because we had this woman named Von Doom. I think that's great. 
Yeah, it is pretty cool to look back, and it, it's going to be interesting to see how this woman plays into the whole uh, stuff they're going to be doing later, where Doom is going to be looking for the Hulk either to uh, fulfill his end of the bargain or to get revenge on him. And, and it's, I think it's going to be interesting how Aaron utilizes this character in that way, because I feel like she's not going to go away. No, I don't think so either. And 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 even though this is you know technically the end of an arc, I mean there is a lot of stuff that hasn't even kind of been resolved yet. Right, exactly. Especially with Doom, because I feel like there really is still kind of a big mystery as to why exactly he did all this. Yeah, I mean Doom doesn't do anything without completely calculated motivations, and he's. I mean, not that his motivation isn't clear here. He just kind of says like you know I'm Doom, I know everything, so. I feel like he's going to reveal why that that is, you know, why he has such an animosity towards Banner and stuff. Yeah, well, that's the thing is, I couldn't decide if it was so much of an animosity. Yeah, maybe so, but I, I couldn't decide if it was so much that or if some reason he, if for whatever reason, he really, really wanted to do experiments on him. Like right. he knows something about his mind that the rest of us don't. And I don't think that that ever became completely 100% clear here. That's a good point. Uh, I, that that whole the whole mad scientist thing in this I think is absolutely fascinating. I I, I love how Jason Aaron is playing with with uh, you know you know monster movie tropes like we were saying before, but even with with having Von Doom who's yet another mad scientist with these like big outlandish ideas like an animanium chainsaw. Yeah, and it's fantastic. Um, how, how do you how do you feel about all of this really serious psychology mixed in with these really bizarre, um, really funny kind of elements? Uh, like, well, hey, it jumps the shark in issue two because we got giant shark <laughs> and they're being jumped. Um, I mean, like, like, uh, like, like, what do you what do you think about all that? I think it's a really interesting sort of juxtaposition. Uh, and I think it it wor- Jason. I think Jason Aaron pulls it off pretty well, and I think it does a lot for the story in making it enjoyable on multiple levels. Where someone who doesn't understand all this psychology stuff, because you're going to get people that aren't big into psychology and don't understand all these concepts reading this, obviously well, reading comic book mostly for the action. Right, exactly, and they're going to get it's a Hulk book, and it's got to have action because he smashes things. And right. He's the Hulk. Yeah. Right, and you get them fighting giant sharks and stuff. I mean, like, it, it's a lot of fun, too. Like, it's not one of those books uh, where um, sometimes with, like, Daredevil, they say you need a, a glass of scotch in your hand when you're when you're reading it, like the Frank Miller stuff. This is, it's got a lot of dark and serious and screwed up ideas in it, but it's a lot of fun, too. It has a sort of lightheartedness in that way, which I think is really interesting, and I think it works pretty well here. Yeah, I feel like it kind of needs it because the the overarching subject matter is so dark um, and 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 and, tw- and I think twisted is the best word. Yeah, that's a good uh, word. I felt like, th- in a lot of ways, this is what the Ang Lee Hulk movie should have been. Ooh, I agree with you. <laughs> that would have been because, awesome. Because the Ang Lee Hulk movie had all of that, not the same, but it, but it had it, it. It was a really psychological movie, and it was using, or at least this is what I said in my review, and I, I think this is true. I, I think it was. I always thought that it was using the Hulk as a metaphor for mental illness, and I think that you have some of that going on here also. But the difference is, this is fun, and and that wasn't. That was just simply depressing. Yeah, I mean, Jason Aaron's obviously channeling Peter David here. I mean, Peter David's run on the Hulk is kind of the definitive run on the Hulk, and it plays with a lot of the same sort of psychological concepts, and it's, like, 80s, 90s comic book cheesiness in there, too. But yeah. it's it, this is just having fun in a different way. It's using the B-movie horror stuff, which works well with Hulk, because it's always been sort of a amalgam of uh, Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, so... Um, I think it works really well. Well, we are running out of time. Uh, what do you think about Sylvester's art? Uh, I like Sylvester's art in the first issue a lot. And then I think after that, I think he penciled issues two and three, and there it gets really inconsistent because he didn't pencil all of it. All There was a bun- there was like four other artists that did finishes and inks and stuff, and it... I don't know, it just looked really inconsistent to me. And then you got the other guy, Wiles Pertasio, 
who did the rest of the issues, and he looked like he was trying to mimic Silvestri's artwork because I've seen that guy draw stuff before and it doesn't look like that. Wow. Um, and then that is interesting. now, now that I'm looking at it, you're absolutely right. You know, once you get to four, it it, it does look different, but it's obviously kind of channeling that 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 earlier look. Yeah. Yeah, and then issue seven was the one which I think was the most inconsistent. I mean, just look at the cover and look at the the name of pe- the names of people like doing art on that book. It's like a list of like ten people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This book, this list is so long. This book should be three times bigger than it is. Yeah, it, <laughs> like that's the that's the only gripe I have to say about this. I really want them to get a consistent artist on this book. I heard Steve Dillon's coming on with issue eight, but I don't know how long he's staying on. So, oh okay. Um, well, it, it'll be fun to see what he does with it. Yeah, I mean, I like Steve Dillon as an artist from what I've seen. I haven't read a ton of his work, but um, it would probably be smart for him to go for a different style. Yeah, I mean, and, I and not not try to channel to channel Sylvester like these other guys were doing. Right. I mean, I don't I don't think Dylan would try that, but um, I think the only reason these guys did it was because these two. I don't even know if this is supposed to be two arcs, but they were so interconnected. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the thing is that they were certainly labeled as two arcs, but I if it were for that, I wouldn't have even you know noticed. Yeah, it reads as one cohesive thing to me. I mean, I, I would, I'd be really disappointed if this wasn't all collected in one volume when it's released in trade. You know? Yeah, so would I. I, I, th- I think it, I think it absolutely needs to be. But I would also be not surprised if they released it in two. Yeah, I mean, they'll try to get as much money out of you as they can. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's that, but but also just you know the, the basic. It's it's named it's technically named as two different arcs. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the first one is named as Hulk Asunder, and then the second one is uh, Hulk versus Banner, or Banner versus Hulk, or something like that. Yeah, I never even realized they were two yeah, arcs until I went back and reread it the second time because it's so. I don't know, like just going from issue to issue all month to month, I didn't even notice because um, it, 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 this is really just one story, I think. Uh, you know, I, I meant to mention this earlier, and I forgot. I'm going to ask you one more question before we go. Sure. What, do, do, do we have, I don't know if I missed something, or I'm just speculating here, but do we have any idea exactly why, definitively, why Banner was not able to make himself into another Hulk? Um, Besides, because the, the way it comes off seems to be it seems to be very much he's he's physically missing the portion of his brain with the Hulk being gone that that allowed the Hulk to exist and I, I don't I don't know if I like that or not. I think that's something that's going to be revealed further. I mean, I could speculate based on other stuff I've read, but I don't want to because this <clears throat> this take might be different. I don't want to say definitively what the answer might be. You know what I'm saying? Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, like, in other places they've said that um, the Hulk is all of Bruce's repressed emotions right. as a personality, so if you take the emotion out of his brain, then he wouldn't be able to physically get emotional enough to become the Hulk physically. I mean, that might be the answer, but I'm not sure. Right, but I don't buy that here because uh, Aaron makes a big deal out of how he still has rage. Right, and he makes, and he sh- and he shows that rage, and I I like by the way that he also that, that that they allow him to be a physical monster in this. Right, and you see um, the Hulk and Banner in each other's heads when they're separated too. Like you know when he's in the yeah mirror. that was in, that was interesting. I wondered about that. Right, and that's what I was saying. The whole thing about like because they're the same person, you can't really separate them. I think that's what he was trying to say. So it's going to be really interesting. I think that's going to be a question that he's going to answer for us, but I'm not really sure at this point. Well, damn, we're all out of time, man. All right, <laughs> but uh, obviously, I, I'd say I'd say we're both recommending this. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. If if you're a, if you've ever wondered about Hulk, you know what it's all about. This is a I think it's a pretty good introduction as to what the character is all about. I think it's an excellent introduction. That's coming from somebody who who had not read much before this. So, oh yeah. well, everybody, thanks a lot for uh, listening to the Comic Vault. And remember that the Comic Vault is a vast and wondrous wonderland of comic books that you can both donate things to and buy things from. You can go to wearegeeksnotnerds.com, click on the Comic Vault, find out what we have for sale right now on eBay from the Comic Vault. And uh, you can also donate stuff if there's anything you'd like to send us to review, uh, either me and Dan or me and Vince, Vince by myself. 
uh, probably not damn by himself. I don't know how he'd get that. Uh, you can send it to Geek Pollution, P.O. Box 14183, Lenexa, Kansas, 66285. Dan, thanks as always for joining me. Everybody, uh, thanks a lot for listening. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Dan. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>